So tripe is the inner lining of the stomach? Tripe is um, a cow's third penis. Sick. When the weather gets cold, one of my favorite things to do is to hit up a hot pot spot to warm up around a bubbling cauldron of soup. So when I heard that there was a curry hot pot at Hometown Hot Pot and Barbecue on Grand Street, I had to check it out. Today, we're feasting Malaysian style with Ronnie Chang, an actor, comedian, and Daily Show correspondent who hit the big time with his role in the movie event of the year, Crazy Rich Asians. Let's see what this curry shop hot pot is all about. I'm actually not quite familiar with Malaysian cuisine, but there is a heavy Indian influence in there. Yeah. How could you describe what Malaysian cuisine is for someone who doesn't know? Malaysian cuisine is probably, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, uh, the best cuisine in the world. Malaysia is like a melting pot in Asia. So you have Chinese people, Indian people, Malay people, even white people, lots of different cultures coming in and they kind of mixed up their cuisine in the same way a literal melting pot of food. So it creates a very unique flavor, which I haven't been able to find outside of Malaysia, and I've tried. But in lieu of being in Malaysia, let's try whatever they have here. You brought up the point of the melting pot, yeah. a literal and figurative idea. Yeah, Mal Malaysia is literally a melting pot. It is hot as fuck. New Yorkers might be familiar with Chinese or Szechuan hot pot, but how big of a deal is hot pot in Malaysian cooking? I'm very surprised to hear that New Yorkers eat hot pot, uh, like go Why? for a Chinese hot pot. I thought New Yorkers just eat, you know, stupid bullshit off the street like hot dogs and... <laughs> maybe, maybe in Malaysia we use like more Malaysian ingredients. Maybe the flavor of the, the broth, like in Malaysia they might use rendang in the broth, but I mean the idea is the same, right? You put flavor into soup and you boil the thing and you eat everything you can until you vomit. I mean that's... <laughs> is that how you I think eat? there's not much difference between Malaysian and Chinese hot pot at all. Before we get to the hot pot, we're gonna try a couple other things on the menu. We're gonna have some barbecue. Are you ready? I will eat anything you put in front of me right now. How about this plate? I'll eat that right now. There we go. Before we get to the hot pot, we're gonna try some of Hometown's barbecue options. Ordered all you can eat and grilled right at your table, today we're going to be cooking up pieces of steak ribs, pork belly, steak with satay sauce, and hometown's curry chicken breast strips. All right, look at all this food. <laughs> yeah, and that's one thing I love about going for Asian barbecue. It's like when people think of Asian food, maybe they get a bit squeamish because they think it's very exotic and they don't know whether they'll have the taste for it. But it's just barbecue meat. Like mm -hmm. Everyone can get behind barbecue meat. If you don't like this, then what the fuck do you eat? really the only downside to Asian barbecue is that you come out smelling like Asian barbecue. Now, how long do we let it? Okay. Um, look, this is where the art comes in. Okay. You just have to feel it. It's no answer. It's not an equation. The meat is sliced so thin that it cooks very quickly. Worst case, it gets a little charred, but you can't really overcook it. I think, Can you flip that? Yeah. You're overcooking it. Can you flip that real quick? Okay, thank you. <laughs> you, you can't really make a mistake here. Can you quickly flip that before it burns? Thank you. You're using... Malaysian sauces. This looks like rendang right here. Rendang is like a Malay curry. How important is curry with Malaysian cooking? Interestingly enough, I love how this show is about curry because you're right, every culture does curry differently. I think there's even a variation in how Indian people in Malaysia do yeah. their curry versus how Indian people in India do it. Rendang is a Malay version of the curry. Chinese curry, I guess laksa is technically a soupy curry that you drink. Okay. I mean, yeah, we use it a lot. Okay. Everyone's laughing at the scissors. You're not laughing now, are you? Look at this. Look how efficient this is. First time we brought this out with, with my friends. I don't want to say what kind of people they were. But let's just say <laughs> they were white. And we brought out scissors and they laughed. They said, what is this? Who the hell uses scissors with me? You're not laughing now, are you? No. This is one of the best ideas ever. <laughs> Oops. Mmm, that was great. So, on the set of Crazy Rich Asians, what kind of food were you eating? Guys, it's Crazy Rich Asians filmed on location in Malaysia and Singapore. Mm -hmm. My hometowns, every night we going out. Someone from oh. Queens, I don't want to name names, but Aquafina was like, we got to eat at <laughs> Chili's in this mall. I'm like, we're not no. eating in a mall. We're hitting the um, 
chao kway teow, the wonton mian, the um, fishball noodles, the um, steamed fish. What what do we eat? What do we not eat? We ate everything in Malaysia for like two months. All right, Ronnie, we gotta save room. We gotta save the room. No, it's not, yet. <laughs> not I yet. got plenty of room. Don't worry about that. So before we eat the hot pot, we're gonna kick it to Mike Chen, who's gonna give us more information. Hey Ronnie, hey Jazzling, it's Mike Chen saying hi from the road in the beautifully delicious Vancouver, Canada. And we're gonna talk about hot pot today, one of my most favorite food items in the world. And with hot pot, you'll have a boiling pot of soup in front of you, an array of vegetables and meats. And the meat's usually sliced very thin because it needs to cook in seconds to retain that fresh meaty flavor. And a hot pot is a dish you can find all across Asia, but different Asian countries would have their own variations of it. For example, the Chinese hot pot, which is called huo guo, typically comes with many types of broth, the most popular being the spicy and nummy broth. And in places like Singapore and Malaysia, the hot pot is known as the steamboat. And the, it's very similar to Chinese hot pot, maybe a little more emphasis on seafood, and the broth is a little more full body. And this is why I love Malaysian cuisine, because it is the quintessential fusion food. It took influences from China, from India, from the native Malay, and they came up with their own unique way of cooking, their own unique flavors that are just out of this world. For example, curry, which is an important part of Malaysian cuisine. The curry utilizes herb seeds, herb roots, yogurt, a lot of native ingredients like coconut milk or tamarind juice to create its own unique blend of flavors. And speaking of curry, I know you guys are eating curry hot pot today. Uh, maybe next time, invite me. Sip your broth at the end. I call it the magic hour, you know, like when the sun sets and all the flavor is just gathering together towards the bottom. That's the greatest soup ever. It's a communal meal. Have fun, have a great conversation, share your food. That's why you go to an all you can eat hot pot place, eat all you want, and you never feel bad because who cares who got the last dumpling? All right, guys, enjoy your meal. Next time again, invite me. See ya. Next up, we're gonna be trying hometown spicy mala hot pot. In Chinese cuisine, mala refers to the marriage of spicy chili peppers with the numbing sensation brought on by Szechuan peppercorn. In the broth, we're gonna be cooking thin slices of beef, chicken gizzard, fried tofu skin, tripe, and then lettuce, mushrooms, and green bean noodles. All right, we have everything. I'm excited, but I need a little bit of a tutorial on what to do for the hot pot. Again, this looks very intimidating. It's a big spread. Yes. It cooks down, everything shrinks when you cook it. All what happens is that the flavors start kind of combining in the pot, which okay. is also like a feature of hot pot. So instead of like trying to pick out what you like, I suggest mm -hmm. you mix it all together and give everything a shot, because sometimes the combination is greater than the sum of its parts. So what goes in first, typically? I would say generally a smart thing to do would be to put in the things that take the longest to cook first. All right. Well, let's get to it. Are there any do's and don'ts for the hot pot? Like, what is a rookie mistake? Proper hot pot etiquette is you kind of take out only what you put in. So if you put in a mushroom, then you can take out mushroom. Don't take out two mushrooms. Yeah, you only put one in. Just putting stuff into hot water and cooking. It's caveman eating. You don't need to be Gordon Ramsay. You don't need to be insert celebrity chef here. You don't need to be... Emerald Live? Yeah, whoever that is, yeah. <laughs> just do what you want to do. It's, it's very casual. Now it's just the treasure hunt portion of the meal. Just looking for stuff you put in five minutes ago. Maybe you forgot about. No mistakes here, just happy accidents. Okay. Totally Bob Ross. Look at this. I put that in <laughs> 10 minutes ago. I didn't even remember that. Oh, that's got a spice. Yeah, it's the Sichuan spice. Whoa, that's really good. Ma <laughs> means numb, la means like spicy hot. So that gives you any indication of what you're gonna taste here. It's not like hot sauce and it's not curry. It's something else. Yeah. It's very hard to describe. All right, so we've tried this hot pot, but we're gonna try the curry hot pot, which I'm super stoked about because we've heard so much about it. Are you ready? Yeah, let's do it. Now for the main event, we're gonna be trying Hometown's Curry Hot Pot. The broth starts with the curry paste. Fermented shrimp paste, oil, chili sauce, curry powder, soy sauce, cumin, fennel, and turmeric are combined. The paste is then mixed into coconut milk and curry leaves are added into the broth. To go along with the soup, we've ordered slices of lamb, beef tendon balls, and pork blood. So now we have the much awaited curry hot pot. And I, Finally. I think I figured out the tools and techniques to this. So let me just get us started. Sure. All right. Let's, no. Uh, no. Okay. No. Here we go. 
here we go. Ah, uh, no. Okay, <laughs> hold on. Start off Again, with- Again, it really, yeah. You it can't. doesn't matter, but I don't want to put that in first, so here we go. We're gonna throw in some of these mushrooms. Oh, I shouldn't use my hands, right? You shouldn't have used your hands. Fuck. Here we go. Don't use the chopsticks. Don't use my chopsticks. Use the, you remember earlier when I said you can't go wrong? Uh, no. Because okay. uh, you're about to yeah. roast me right now. <laughs> We've had hot pot, but this is a curry hot pot, yeah. which is a little bit different. I feel like it's more maybe focused on the broth. It's a more diluted curry, so you can cook stuff in it. I'm told that this is like a Penang curry. So Penang is like a city in Malaysia that's known for having really, really good food. And I think what makes Penang curry, Penang curry is they add blachan to it. And blachan is like a fermented, shrimp paste that's also spicy. It gives it like a unique flavor. It has like more of a creamier texture to it. I like it, it's really good. Even Penang curry wouldn't necessarily be like this. It would be a bit thicker. Okay. This is like a hot pot version of it. Indians are the third largest ethnic group in Malaysia. Obviously, we see that there's connection within the food and the curry. Yeah, so I mean, Malaysia is a truly multicultural country and a lot of the food that we take pride in in Malaysia is actually Indian food, like mm -hmm. uh, roti prata, or otherwise known as roti chennai, obviously our curries. Needless to say, the Indian influences in Malaysia are huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it affects everyday life. Crazy rich Asians took over the globe this year. Now that you're on the other side of the tornado, what is the legacy that comes with that? And what does it mean for Asian Americans? Hopefully the movie showed that if we get people to tell their own stories, it can be not only commercially viable, but we end up seeing really cool stories being told. So in this case, you know, we had a Asian story written by someone from Singapore. He was writing a Singapore story. And we had a Asian director and a cast that embodied it. You know, this thing that you would think is such a niche story, which is Asian people going back to Asia and, and meeting their family, um, is actually quite universal. So I hope that's the legacy of the movie in American show business. Well, thanks for joining me. Two hot pots in one sitting. I've never done that Not before. Not to mention a barbecue. And a barbecue. And if you are one of the three people who haven't watched Crazy Rich Asians, you better do that shit right now. On The Daily Show as on well. The, yeah. On The Daily Show. Keep going. And what else you got? Um, <laughs> on, on Twitter, on Instagram. He's on Twitter and Instagram. I got a website. I got a website. He's on Yelp. Yeah. Leaving reviews. Yeah. Let's leave him a review. He did a great job. Thanks for having me, man. I'll come and film with you anytime. 